Okay, so it looks like we're live. Okay, so thanks uh, everyone for coming to the September uh, virtual JBUG. Um, so this month we've got Marek Goldman, who leads up the Docker initiatives at Red Hat. So he's going to be talking about Docker, giving an introduction, and then talking about how it works with JBoss EAP. Um, so before Wi-Fi. we, well, and well, oh, Wildfly. So are you covering EAP or just Wildfly? Uh, just Wi-Fi, the, the, the community uh, project, um, because we have uh, uh, the Docker image for JBoss Wi-Fi already there. OK. OK, so I think maybe the title's wrong then. Uh, or the abstract, I'm not sure. Yeah, the, the abstract is a bit misleading, yes. So OK. I forgot to fix it. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, don't worry. I'm sure the principles are the same, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah OK, great. OK, so before we start, I'm just going to talk about what upcoming events we've got. I'll share my screen, so I've got some slides. So hopefully you can see see my slides now. Yeah. OK, so a quick uh, introduction to Virtual JBug. What is it? Um, so it's um, basically we're running user group style events, uh, in particular about JBoss technologies um, over Google Hangouts on Air. Um, they kind of aim to be kind of um, not like dry webinars. We want them to be kind of fun and interactive sessions. Uh, we've, we recently renamed from JBoss Worldwide. Uh, we found that the JBoss Worldwide name wasn't very snappy. Um, also, what didn't really work very well with Twitter, given the limited number of characters available. Um, so, uh, and also, people were using VJBug and Virtual JBug anyway, even though we weren't actually calling it that. So, we've now switched to Virtual JBug. Um, we're, as always, we're interested in feedback. So, if you can, if you can give us some feedback on our events, or if you there's a particular event that you're interested in, then you know, please give us feedback by our Meetup page, uh, which you can see the URL there. OK, so what have we got coming up? So next month, on the 21st of October, we have a session on uh, Achillean, where we've got Aslak Knutsen, the project lead, talking about that. So Achillean is a really cool and... OK, so it looks like we're live. OK, so thanks, uh, everyone, for coming to the September... School by uh, error. So this is Malarik, I think that's you. Goldman, who leads up the Docker initiatives at Red Hat. He's going to be talking about Docker, who's given an introduction, and then talking about how it works with JMOC EAP. Um, so before we... Well, and well, our Wi-Fi. So are you coming here? <laughs> OK, so it's... <laughs> it was me. It was me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Right, OK. So back to... Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, should, I should probably switch to... Uh, Marek is finding this hilarious. <laughs> OK, <laughs> let's get back to things. OK, so what, the, what upcoming sessions have we got? So we have uh, Talk on Achillean next month on the 21st of October. Uh, that's by the project lead, Aslak Knudsen. Uh, so Achillean is a testing tool for doing integration tests uh, inside an app server. So it makes it really easy to write tests that run inside the app server and make use of all the app server technologies without you having to bootstrap it all yourself. Uh, and then the month after, we've got um, a talk on case studies in testable Java EE development. So for this session, we have Andrew Rubinger, talk, who's the author of the O'Reilly book, Continuous Enterprise Development in Java. So he's going to be talking through some examples um, that also use Achillean. Um, so I should say Aslak Knutsen also co-authored the book. Uh, and that will be on Tuesday, November the 18th. Uh, there's another meetup group that you might be interested in, uh, another virtual meetup group called VJUG. So that's a Java user group. Um, their next session is on um, cre um, creating an application that uses HTML5, AngularJS, Groovy, Java, MongoDB. And Trisha Gee will be running a demo where she builds an application in an hour using all those technologies, showing how you can kind of rapidly build that. And that's going to be on Thursday, September 18th. OK, I think that was the last one slide I had. 
So I'm just going to stop sharing my screen if Google Hangout lets me. Okay, so um, okay, so now we'll uh, kick the kick the today's session off. So thanks for joining us, Marek. Uh, so this is Marek Goldman from Red Hat. So uh, thank yeah, you. Yeah. I, I, you can see you now. Um, yeah, so um, if you could just kind of tell us a bit about, you know, uh, how long have you been at Red Hat and you know, when did you start Red Hat? What made you join Red Hat? Well, I work for Red Hat for over five years, five and a half uh, right now. I joined in January 2009, uh, 2009 uh, and yeah, I started working on uh, a project which was called uh, JBoss Cloud at that time, <laughs> and we were um, starting a JBoss uh, application cluster in the cloud, and of course we use uh, AWS uh, uh, EC2 at that point. So this was the first uh, first idea to, to make uh, JBoss in the clouds. Excellent. Um, and you're uh, you're in Poland, is that right? Yeah, remote. that's true. I, I'm remote worker from Poland, uh, Poznań. Okay. Yeah. Is there many Red Hat people over there in Poland, or is it just yourself? Well, we have we have uh, right now 21 people, but we are spread across uh, across uh, whole Poland. Uh, most people live, uh, of course, uh, nearby or in Warsaw, so we have there are a really small office. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Okay, so are uh, you ready to kick off your presentation? Sure. Okay, thanks. If you could share your screen, you good. Can you see the slides? Yeah, that looks good, thanks. Okay, perfect. Uh, so today I would like to talk about uh, Docker and uh, JBoss middleware, not JBoss as uh, JBoss application server, but JBoss as a middleware, uh, and why this uh, Really nice combination. Uh, so yeah, I'm Mark Goldman. Like I uh, mentioned, I uh, I started with a cloud-related stuff. So, so I was the box grinder project leader, which uh, was a tool uh, to create uh, uh, virtual images for various cloud uh, clouds and uh, virtualization providers. And now I'm uh, into Docker. Uh, so I I make sure that JBoss uh, projects run uh, well on Docker. Mm, I'm also a Fedora packager, so if you are interested in uh, uh, using Wi-Fi packaged as RPMs, you can just uh, uh, you install Wi-Fi, and yeah, this is my work. Uh, of course, I'm I'm maintainer of over 200 packages in Fedora, so yeah, mostly Java related. Um, so today's agenda is pretty simple. Uh, first of all, I want to do a small introduction. Um, so, um, why there was a need to create a tool such uh, uh, Docker, and of course, I want to compare it to virtual machine because, uh, well, people mm, try to think about uh, Docker containers as uh, virtual machines, which is not really true. And uh, then I want to um, tell you about the current state uh, of the JBoss middleware projects and, and, and Docker, so what kind of images we have. And uh, I dive into uh, demos uh, afterwards, uh, some basic demos to, uh, to show how to use the, the Docker uh, commands. And then we will uh, go through, I think, six or seven Wi-Fi demos. So Hope this will be pretty exciting. So, uh, Docker. Mm, current applications, we, well, applications we, we write right now are pretty complex. Um, mm, we have a lot of different languages, and these languages um, have different requirements for operating system, libraries, and so on. Um, with all the microservices uh, hype out there, um, it gets even worse <laughs> because uh, uh, one application can be written in many languages and uh, all these parts are uh, connected to each other through uh, API, so are, are talking to each other through APIs. 
So this makes it possible to spread uh, one uh, application across really many servers, uh, running different operating systems and uh, yeah, things like this. So applications are complex. It is not like uh, a few years ago when, uh, when we uh, compiled our C program, uh, put it into a uh, server and run it, forget. No, <laughs> this is not uh, the case today. Mm, we have also a different uh, pro problem. Uh, we run our application on different deployment environments. Uh, when we create our application on our laptop, we compile it, we, uh, we test it, we run the, the unit test, uh, and we run the application. It works good. Uh, then we commit our, uh, our changes and put it into some, uh, most probably, Git repository. And our continuous integration mm, pulls uh, the changes, uh, creates the application one more time, and deploys on a staging environment. And the problem is that the staging environment is uh, completely different to our mm, laptop. So right now we have uh, two different environments. And of course, there's also production. Uh, uh, from the definition, uh, staging and production should be really the same. But it's not so easy to, to make them uh, be the same, really. Now, of course, there are tools like uh, Chef, Puppet, Ansible. Uh, but uh, these tools have drawbacks, too. For example, the, the startup time uh, from bare uh, image to, to a fully working uh, image with our changes, well, this takes time. So this is really not ideal. So Docker can help us with this by providing a unified uh, de deployment uh, format. And we are talking here about uh, images. Mm, Docker is uh, nice because uh, you can share these images mm -hmm. with, with people, and uh, when people run this image, mm, it mm, it will the, the 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 environment will be the, exactly the same even on different uh, hardware running different uh, operating system. So Docker is already a project to manage containers, and well, of course, images too. But the, the, uh, the main thing is containers. So what containers are? Uh, containers, uh, um, well, contain, uh, it is a you know, lightweight operating uh, system virtualization. And yeah, yeah, when I say virtualization, uh, you think about v virtual machines. But this is not strictly true. Uh, this is uh, really much more lightweight. Take a look at this. Um, uh, this is the main difference. In a VM, uh, to start our process, uh, which is, for example, a JVM process uh, running our application server, uh, we need to start the whole OS. So we, with the OS, all the services that are uh, run on, on boot, and after this, we can finally start our process. Of course, this takes time. With container, this is uh, different because uh, we directly launch mm, the process we are interested in without, without even booting the operating system. So as you can imagine, uh, this, uh, this makes uh, it really fast. So how does it really compare to a virtual machine? Well, it's completely different. <laughs> Uh, just take a look. There are a f just a few examples. There are a lot of uh, uh, other uh, differences, but just take a look at, at the first one: hardware. Well, in a virtual machine, all hardware is simulated. Even CPU, the network uh, uh, card, uh, the disk control, and so on. Everything uh, is simulated, and we talk to the uh, real hardware uh, through an abstraction layer. Uh, with container, we talk directly to the uh, to the hardware. Of course, um, we cannot use uh, use it uh, directly because there needs to be some governance. But this really uh, doesn't affect the performance so much. <laughs> uh, 
And how about supported operating system? In a virtual machine, we can really uh, run whatever we want. It can be Linux, it can be Windows or uh, Solaris, uh, Mac OS, whatever. Uh, in container, we, we can only uh, run Linux. Container are Linux only uh, uh, is Linux only technology, and uh, this means that it requires kernel to run. So you need to have a Linux kernel, and you can only la run Linux uh, operating system inside the container. So only Linux on Linux. How about startup time? Mm, well, virtual machine depends on the size uh, and depends on the on what we have installed there. Um, from seconds, from 10 seconds, let's say, to, to, to a couple of good minutes. Uh, in container, uh, you, you start a container in milliseconds. So this is really a huge difference. Regarding scalability, uh, we can run just a few virtual machines. It also depends on the uh, on the hardware we have. But well, let's say we, we can start ten virtual machines. Maybe uh, <laughs> when we start containers, really sky is the limit. So um, I, for example, started about two hundred containers on my laptop, and in each container I had a JVM process. So this is a pretty good count, I think. Uh, how about size? A uh, virtual machine is really huge. Uh, and this is because it has a disk on which we have the full operating system, all the libraries, all the configuration for files and our application. So yeah, this is really huge. And if we want to start a new um, virtual machine, what we need to do? We need to copy everything and, uh, and launch it. So we'll end up with let's say, another 20 gigs uh, of space wasted. Uh, but but uh, even if, uh, if the, the uh, let's say, 95% of files are the same. Uh, containers are different because we use a copy and write file system. So from an image, if we start a container, it literally does not copy anything. So uh, we can start 100 uh, containers, and we will end up with just the metadata, re um, uh, which is uh, um, assigned to the container, but no actual files will be copied. Uh, we will save on this only things that will change or uh, that we add. Everything else will not be saved on the disk. So this is this is another big difference. So as you can see, Linux for the win. <laughs> so uh, if you are a Linux user, uh, you should be happy. I guess uh, every Linux distribution right now has uh, uh, all the requirements built in. So it's uh, Linux uh, kernel 3.8 or newer, and more or less that's it. Uh, but if you are on other operating system like uh, Windows or uh, Mac OS, you can use the boot to, boot to Docker tool, um, which makes it possible to run Docker containers uh, inside a VM, uh, which will be run in VirtualBox. Uh, so, well, this works pretty fine, and uh, many people use this. But of course, preferred way is to use uh, to, to 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 run it on Linux directly. Uh, Docker has a really great community. Um, Docker was started in January 2013, and uh, since then it has over uh, 580 contributors. There are 17 commits per day, and 90% uh, of these commits are external, so not from the uh, people employed by the Docker uh, um, company. All right, uh, so right now I would like to, to talk about the JBoss middleware and, and, and Docker. Uh, we have uh, created Docker images for, for a few uh, JBoss projects. Of course, we started with Wi-Fi. Uh, it is uh, available. It was the first, uh, first image. 
We have also Keycloak, uh, this is a single sign-on uh, implementation. If you want to have uh, Ruby applications uh, server running on, on top of uh, Wi-Fi, then try <coughs> TorqueBox. Uh, if you want to push messages for your mobile, try AeroGear. And if you want to have a, a Clojure application server, try Immutant. Uh, if you want to run Node.js applications on top of JVM, try Noden. And if you are bored with writing uh, server-side code, try LiveOak. Uh, yeah, these projects are already av available on uh, as Docker images. So just pull them and, and start, using, start using them. Um, of course, the plan is to, to add more. So, in fact, this is this is my duty <laughs> to add more, and uh, there will be more uh, soon. Of course, if you if you want to help me, or uh, if you are if you have some special request which uh, project should be next, let me know. So, a few links. Uh, first of all, jables.org/docker. You will you will find a really a microsite where uh, we told why uh, why we started creating them. So a small documentation, a list of all our images available, um, a few instructions for uh, for each uh, for e each image. Well, basic uh, information you can find there. There is, of course, also uh, uh, Docker Hub. Docker Hub is a public register, register with images. So if you create your own images, you can host them uh, on the Hub for free. Uh, and we do this uh, with our JBoss images. Uh, our, all our images are available on, on Docker Hub. So you can browse them, and uh, you can find uh, some documentation there, too. Uh, everything is there. Just just go to the uh, link. And of course, uh, we have also source files on uh, GitHub. So if you go to GitHub uh, slash Jables slash Docker files, you will find source files uh, to build the images. Uh, in fact, uh, this repository is linked to Docker Hub, so if we push something to this repository, a new image will be created and uh, uh, it will become uh, automatically available uh, to everyone. So this is in sync with the with the Docker Hub. So Marek, can I just yeah. but also there's um, on the new jvs.org site when you when you go to download a JWS product. Uh, alongside the source and the zip that you'd imagine, we also have Docker image uh, downloads as well for some of our products. Well, uh, uh, I don't think it, it was it was uh, discussed uh, yet, but I guess uh, we will uh, we will add it there too, probably. Uh, it's there now. It's there, now. <laughs> it's, there for some, it's there for some products at the moment. Oh, well, pro products. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, not yet. The answer is not yet, but we are working on, on making products available. So uh, right now I'm talking only about projects, but uh, we are in, 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 in progress to make uh, uh, product images available. And of course, the first one will be JBoss EAP. OK. So um, I think it's time to start. Uh, some demos and to show how how to use this uh, this stuff. Uh, Paul, can you see the, the yes. terminal? Yes. Okay. Is it clear to those at the back? Yep. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Uh, so um, I will start with the with the with the basic stuff. Every interaction with Docker starts with the Docker command. It has uh, really many sub commands, but I will not talk about. Uh, many of them, <laughs> uh, but about I will touch about half of them. Mm. So to run a container, we need to use the Docker run command. So Docker run. We need to specify which um, 
which image we, we want to choose. It's, for example, Fedora. And what command we want to run inside this uh, container. I add uh, two switches. The IT is uh, I want to uh, sudo terminal and uh, I want to run it in, in interactive mode because I want to run bash, so I want to interact with it. And dash dash rm means that uh, if uh, I stop the container, all the state will be removed. Mm. By default, all the state is saved, uh, so you can, for example, uh, grab some logs or whatever. So uh, let's start it, and that's it. I'm inside the container, which runs uh, etc, which runs uh, Fedora 20. This is really a regular uh, Linux, so mm, there is nothing uh, to talk about. But you can do regular stuff. You can run the update, uh, really. Just a regular operating system. OK, so I'm st I will stop it. And you can run the same way, for example, a different operating system like Fedora uh, 21. Please note the, the bash uh, changes. Uh, so I have now version uh, 4.3. Uh, you can see that how it is. So I'm running now a Fedora 21. Uh, so yeah, it's it's really easy to, to to run different operating systems, and of course Linux based, and uh, it's really fast, <laughs> as you can see. Um, this might be surprising for you. If I do ps, you will see that only the bash process is running in the in the container. Of course, the ps itself too, right? Uh, but the bash is uh, running and it has bit one. So every process which is started as the main one will have bit one. So in this case, it's bash. So well, let's, let's start it one more time. And I will go to uh, next tab. Uh, to list all, all, uh, all uh, containers that are actually running, we use the docker ps command. As you can see, you can see the, the uh, the container. Every new container has uh, uh, every container has uh, an ID. I can use this ID to, to do different things. For example, I can uh, kill a container, and that's it. Uh, as you can see, our my bash exited. Uh, I mentioned before that uh, there are a lot of images on Docker Hub. Uh, so how to get them? Um, you use Docker pull command. For example, jbox white fly. So it checks the latest version and it pulls it and done. It seems that I have the latest version because it didn't download anything. Uh, almost the same way you can uh, push images. So if you use do docker push, you can, uh, well, if you create your own image, you can use the docker push uh, command to share share it with with the uh, with the world. And uh, what we have, if you use docker ps dash a, you will see also images that are exited uh, is well stopped. Um, not only the, the the running one. So you can do one thing. You can, for example. Uh, if, if you want to get rid of it, so I just get the container ID and execute docker rm command, and this removes all the state for the uh, for the container. This is exactly the same uh, like the docker run dash dash rm. So it does automatically uh, the rm for us. Um, we have also uh, some I have also some images on my uh, laptop, so to list them, uh, use the Docker images mm, command. As you can see, you can have a lot of images, and uh, you can also remove an image too. For example, this one. To remove, you use the Docker RME RME uh, command, and it removes the, the image. 
Okay. Uh, but how to create a uh, own image? So uh, there are two two ways. One is to to do this um, in interactive mode. For example, you, you launch a bash. Uh, uh, you add software, you tweak the configuration, and so on. And then you use the Docker commit command uh, to create an image from it. And uh, it takes just you know second, and you will uh, get the um, image ID. And you can do whatever you want. You can start a new container with it immediately. But this is not the uh, best way to create images. Uh, the best way is to use Docker files. Docker files is to uh, is a file where you uh, describe what steps needs to be done to create uh, to create uh, an image. Uh, there are a lot of instructions. In this case, I use only three. Mm, the first one uh, is from, so this specifies which image will be the base for my image. In case of Docker files, you, you need to have you must have uh, a base image. Uh, this is required. Uh, creating base images is completely different, uh, but I, I won't talk about this uh, today. Uh, but it's uh, of course doable. Uh, then uh, we right. run uh, the yum command installed uh, in. Uh, so I guess. The Google watermark is over the top of, of the first line of your uh, command, of your, of your script, the Docker file. Is it possible to move your terminal down a touch? Yeah, I can also do this. Does Very it work? Good. That's better. OK, perfect. All right, uh, yeah, uh, so the run command specifies what needs to be run uh, inside of the container, what we uh, want to do with the, with the file system, and so on. These are just regular comments. You can have them a lot, uh, a lot of them in, in, in the Docker file. And the last thing is uh, C CMD, uh, which specifies uh, what should be run uh, when we start the container. So this way, we don't need to specify, for example, the, the bash at the end. Uh, in this case, this will be as being uh, HTTPD, but this will be run automatically. If we specify something, then it will be, uh, and then it will override the has been HTTP. Okay. Mm. Uh, build an image. We run the Docker build command. Additionally, I use the uh, dash t, which will tag this um, image after a successful build. Uh, well, this is <laughs> this is a trick because. Uh, Normally it will it will take some time, but uh, since I've built it already, Docker is smart enough to figure it out, it out and it will use the cache. Uh, where is it? Here, using cache. So uh, if uh, if uh, something didn't change, uh, uh, then Docker will use cache. This makes uh, rebuilding really fast. For example, if you want to uh, change only the last. Uh, uh, command, then only last uh, layer will be rebuilt. Everything else will be used. Of course, you can force uh, a fresh rebuild and so on. But this is a nice feature. Mm. Okay, uh, so let's let's run it. Run it. Okay, Apache is fine. Now let's go to the um, browser. And yeah, as you can see. On this IP, this is Docker internal IP uh, of this uh, container, uh, the uh, HTTP is running. So oh, good. <laughs> so far, so good. Um, all right. Um, the next thing um, I would like to, to, to show you is, well, the JBoss Wi-Fi image and creating containers from this uh, image. Mario, quick yes. question before you go on. So um, I've got a question from the audience, from IRC. So can we run SUSE or other Linux on Fedora with Docker? Yes. Yes, it, it, it really doesn't matter uh, what kind of uh, Linux it is. We can, we can. But if 
the host machine is uh, Fedora. Yes, yes. Uh, there is no problem with it. Mm, because uh, as long as Docker is installed, you can share images between the even uh, even different uh, operating system uh, uh, running on the host. Okay, so you can have a. You, I don't know if this makes sense, but can you have a SUS container if you're running on Fedora? Yes. Okay. With different kernels, I mean. That's, that's if you have different kernel, it's, it, it will, will, it, will it work? Did you hear that, Mark? Uh, not really. <laughs> so if you had a different kernel version. Yes, yes, because uh, the thing is that only one kernel is running, and uh, it is the kernel of the host. We won't boot anything from the uh, from the image, even if there is uh, some other kernel. Um, in fact, uh, uh, image creators, base image creators, remove kernel from the images because it doesn't make sense to have that, to have it there, because it, it just takes uh, space. Mm, we reuse the kernel which is actually running. What happens with the architecture in that case? Like, yeah, do, can, you, can you go across? Sorry, can you go across the ARM versus like x eighty six, and would you still be able to share the Docker file? Or you might need to speak up. So did you hear that, Mark? Uh, it, it, the question was about the architecture, right? Yes. Uh, Docker supports only 64 bits. And I uh, presume x86 only, not ARM or. No, 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 no. It's, it, well, <laughs> it makes a lot of things simpler. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I don't think we're complaining. I think we're just curious how it works. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, so, all, it's all, Well, uh, it technically is really possible uh, to, to, to add support for uh, 32 bits. It's really simple. But mm, I don't think uh, people care about it. Okay, so if, um, if I had a, say my host machine was Fedora, and I wanted to run uh, a server inside a, say, Debian uh, container, uh, I guess it would boot a Debian VM and run it, the server inside that container. Well, uh, uh, um, Debian thing might be uh, a bit tricky, Debian, uh, because it might have uh, uh, well, but well, in general, there is no problem with running uh, some uh, other uh, operating systems inside of a container. It, it really it, there is no um, relation between the host operating system and the uh, and the container, um, and the operating system which is uh, in the container, really. Okay. So I think okay. So I think maybe I'm just confused how that works then. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How does that work? Uh, this is well. The thing is that um, uh, all the features that are required to run a container are uh, built into Docker, uh, built into kernel 3.8 or uh, newer. So uh, these are standard uh, things, and uh, including C groups, including namespaces, uh, and uh, including uh, uh, copy and write file system. So these strings built uh, are the fo foundation of Docker. Uh, so these things are already uh, running in the host kernel. So we don't need to 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 make uh, to make them into con in the in the container available. And in fact, uh, we don't do not run anything. Uh, containers are all about uh, isolation of processes. So w this is a different tech to a virtual machine. So there we boot booted everything, and in containers we just isolate processes. So that's that's a different story. So in fact, we we don't need the kernel. That's that's the short story. Okay, so I think yeah, I think I, I think I followed that. Okay, so does that answer it for? Everyone? Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, so um, okay, we booted the the Fedora 
uh, the, the, the Apache um, container, but let's run the JBoss while fly one. Uh, I will add also this two switches to clean it up. And yeah, as you can see, I started it and the uh, application server is already up. So the performance is, is, is really great. Uh, okay, the question is where I can find the uh, application server. Okay, so we can do this following way. Docker PS, I can grab the container ID and then I can use Docker inspect uh, to uh, see all the information about the running container. And somewhere there, there will be an IP address. So I will copy it and go to this IP on port 8080 and there is a Wi-Fi application server running. Okay. That's nice, but there is a but there is a different way to make this uh, application server available. We can expose the required port. For example, we want to have forward port 8080 on local host on the host machine to port 8080 on the in the in the container. So let's start it one more time. And this time, I will not go to the IP, but I will go to local host. That's it. Uh, OK, uh, so let's go now to administration console. Whoops, problem. Why? Because it, the administration console runs on port 9.9.9.0. So let's stop the container and expose the additional port. Let's run it one more time. And now we can go here. OK, another error. <laughs> Why? Um, because Wi-Fi uh, administration, administration console requires a management user to be created so we can use it and uh, access it uh, access the, to access the console. OK, mm, normally we would use the uh, add add user.sh uh, add <laughs> add user.sh uh, script to add a user. How, how do we do this inside of a container? Well, the simple, the simple uh, way is to extend the image and um, take a look at this Docker file. Uh, here we define that <clears throat> our base image is JBoss Whitefly and we want to run the add user script uh, inside of the container and add an admin user with this password. So it's really simple. In the build command uh, we will specify that uh, uh, if the command uh, successfully um, created an, an image tagged with Wi-Fi management and the run command is well pretty simple uh, almost the same as uh, previously that I want to run the Wi-Fi management uh, uh, from the Wi-Fi management uh, image so once again everything is cached because I, I run it uh, previously so let's run it Okay, and right now if I go to the port 1990, the Wi-Fi uh, <coughs> administration console will be available. So what we can do here, well, uh, take a look uh, at, the, at the server name. Uh, this is some kind of uh, hash. If we do docker ps, you will see that this is the container ID of the uh, of the uh, Wi-Fi um, application server. What can we do here? We can, for example, deploy an application. So let's choose one, save, and let's enable it. Okay. We, we can confirm it here. Uh, here, deploy it not in for war, 
and so on. So this application is available. And since we expose all support 8080, if I go to the node info context, you will see the application actually running. And this is a really simple application that shows the host name and well, the other uh, things too. Uh, it will be useful for for uh, my cluster demo later. Okay, uh, so this is this is not really exciting way to deploy applications inside uh, of a container. So how you can do this uh, in a different way? Well, <clears throat> there are some uh, different options to to deploy an application. For example you can use the Docker volumes. The Docker volume uh, uh, is when you uh, mount a, a directory on from the host inside of the container. For example, you can uh, mount to the deployments directory and put uh, your application uh, to this directory. It will be uh, found by the uh, application server and deployed. And, well, there are other options too. But I think that the the best way is to uh, create a new image with the application. So, Docker file. Take a look at this Docker file. Uh, once again, we extend the JBoss Whitefly uh, image, and here we use the add instruction, which adds the uh, application to this uh, directory. Pretty simple. Uh, Build command is simple too, and, and the run command is, well, again, simple. So, uh, once we have the, the image, we can run it, and this time uh, we have our application server, and at the end, the node info, as you can see here, is deployed too. <clears throat> so if we go, if we, well, if I refresh now here, this, you will see that the host name uh, changed. So uh, now uh, the request was served by uh, container 2D, which is the only container running. Okay, um, so this is how you deploy application, but there is also a, a different, uh, well, uh, if something goes wrong, you, you need to take a look at logs. Uh, so how do you do uh, logging with uh, containers and JBoss, uh, well, Wi-Fi application server? Uh, there are different uh, ways to do this. Uh, I wrote a blog post about it, so there are, uh, I think, four or five examples uh, with Docker files and so on. Uh, just go to, 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 my, uh, <clears throat> to my blog and uh, you will find uh, all about it. Uh, but today, I would like to show you how to do logging using volumes. Um, and this way, um, uh, in this example, I want to use, uh, I will use the uh, basic JBoss Wi-Fi uh, image. And but we need to prepare a bit the the environment. Um, can look at this prepare script. So first of all, of course, we need to have a directory where we want to store the logs. Uh, then we need to change the owner. Why? Because when I create something here, uh, it will be uh, created with the uh, current user permissions, which has ID 1000. Um, the user which is running inside of the container has a different uh, user ID. Uh, in this case, uh, the application server is running with user ID 431. So uh, this user will not be able to, to store anything in the, in the uh, log directory um, with ID 1000. So first of all, we need to change the, uh, the owner. And if you run uh, on a host with SU Linux enabled, which is, of course, Fedora and uh, RHEL 7 uh, too, uh, then you, you need to make sure that the lab label of the, um, of the directory is the same as the process running uh, the Docker container. Uh, so let's prepare it. 
And yeah, as you can see, the log directory is uh, owned by some other user, and it's empty. Mm. Now take a look at the, at the run command, the uh, run script. In this case, we add the one new switch, dash b, and uh, I mount the log um, directory inside the log directory of the Wi-Fi application server. So let's run it. And I just stop it because we are interested only in what's created in the log. As you can see, there is a file called server log. More server log. So this is just a regular uh, boot uh, log. So this is th this way you can you can handle logs. As I, as I mentioned, there are different options, and uh, you can uh, take a look at uh, my uh, blog post about. To, to take a look. Yeah. <laughs> um, it is very unlikely to uh, that you will just deploy your application and it will work. <laughs> Most probably, you you need to do some configuration changes in the uh, in the application server. So uh, once again, <laughs> there are different ways to do this. And uh, for example, uh, yeah, th there are I think five or six ways. I, I describe them on in my different blog post. And today I will show you one with uh, with the August tool. Um, if we take a look at the Docker file here, you will see that we add some. Uh, File with the configure with, with the changes we want to do, and then we run the out to tool, um, and the magic is in, of course, uh, I'll cut it. Sure. It may look a bit weird at the first time, but uh, August August is really really nice tool, and it's very stable. This is very important uh, in. in configuration changes. Um, the first line means that we will modify XML configuration files. Then we load the uh, configuration file we want to change. Uh, later, I define a, a shortcut. This is very simple to XPath. So uh, uh, if you know it, this will be simple. And then we change things we want to change. Uh, in this uh, case, I just want to uh, change the log level to debug, and uh, uh, I add a new logging category. Mm, I save it and print errors if there are any. So I can build it and, of course, uh, improve it. Oh, already allocate. All oh, right, of course. Yes, there's uh, something running already. And it's bound to the same port. Mm -hmm. If I run it, you see that uh, my my terminal is green with uh, debug messages. So yeah, the co changing configuration is a simple. Other other simple way of uh, changing configuration is just to add new configuration file and use it. And I think now <laughs> it's now uh, time to the fun stuff. So if we, I want to show you some cluster demo. Mm. Uh, of course, we on the front end we will have Apache HTTPD with mod cluster, and on the uh, back end we will have Wi-Fi. Let's start with the front end. It is very simple. Mm, so I start from Fedora, uh, base uh, image. I install HTTPD and mod cluster. Uh, I uh, make sure that mo uh, proxy balancer module is disabled because it conflicts with mod cluster. And then I add new, uh, well, custom, custom mm, mod cluster configuration. I expose port 80. This is very important. I will talk about this a bit later. Uh, and the uh, entry command is uh, HTTPD, of course. Uh, 
uh, demo cluster um, configuration is, well, pretty simple. One thing is uh, that on the most cluster manager, I will, I, ha I have this application that shows uh, <coughs> what uh, nodes are uh, connected to the load balancer. Um, the build command is also simple and um, it's simple too. But there is one thing to note that I will uh, add a name. This is another thing you need to <laughs> Uh, remember, I will talk about this uh, in a minute. Uh, so when I start this container, it will be named LB. This is pretty important. So uh, let's build it and let's run it. And yeah, that's it. Uh, I export, well, forward the port uh, 9090 on localhost to port 80 on inside of the container. So if I go now to localhost for 1990, you will see the further test page. That's good. If I go to the mod cluster manager, I will see all the nodes connected. But there are no, well, there are zero nodes right now, so it's empty. Uh, that's good. Uh, if I go now. This is a TCP level, right? It's not HTTP aware. Uh, could you please repeat? Because it was cut, cut uh, in in the in the front. The um, port forwarding, where you can take one port number and yeah. map it to it, port. Yeah, that's, that's TCP, but you can uh, forward UDP too. But it's not HTTP aware. So if an application inside the Docker container generates a self-referencing URL. It's going to be wrong. Mm, I'm not sure I, I follow. Well, if, if I have a, some HTML in a web page and I want to, to put in a, a link back to myself, mm -hmm. I can put in you know, host name, call, and port number, but they're going to be the host and port from inside the container, not the ones that are exposed externally. Right. Uh, well, this is a proxy would be right that. Right. This is just uh, just a regular IP table forward. So it, it, it really doesn't do a, a, any magic. And uh, this is a simple way to make the container uh, visible from from the outside. Yeah, but it's not going to work for something like web services where envelopes encode host names and ports. So yeah, probably you would need something something more sophisticated. <coughs> so we've got another question by Mark, and um, while you're whilst you're interrupted, so is, uh, is it possible to have a local repo for Docker images, um, similar to what you'd have with a local Nexus Maven repo for the organization? Uh, well, uh, yes, there. Are, first of all, you can. Um, Call it repo, but it's not a repo. If you do pull the images, you can have, have all the images uh, here locally, uh, for example, like this. But you can also host a, a registry uh, yourself, so you have uh, can have a private registry. Okay, can it act as a cache? So, if if it's not in that registry, it'll go and look up in another registry. Uh, no, I don't think uh, it has. It, no, I don't think it has uh, cache support. Okay. This is just a push there because you uh, you can push or uh, uh, pull from a registry, private registry, but you need to specify uh, exactly this uh, this address. I I don't think I haven't seen anything. About uh, about uh, some some forwarding to, to another register or the public hub. Does Docker Hub have pay for private hosting the same way that GitHub does? Can you create private repos on it? Yeah, they they have also private repos. It's it's a paid feature. You can have one free uh, private repo. Okay, uh, so uh, what do we yeah. 
we have the load balancer running. Let's go now to, let's create now some nodes. And uh, the Docker file is following. This is uh, a bit different. Uh, so uh, the Wi-Fi app uh, is the image with the bundled application. And uh, additionally, we add our own custom, custom configuration. Uh, the only change is that we do not uh, use the advertise option of Modcaster. We need to specify the, the list of uh, load balancer, which is done here, but about this in a minute. Uh, so I override uh, the, the command. I use the standalone HA uh, XML configuration I just uploaded. I uh, specify the node name, the JVM root, and I specify the list of all load balancers. So uh, here is, uh, is the important part. This is this environment variable. Mm. Do you remember the expose port 80? This is here. And the name LB is here. This is a TCP port, and I want to have address. What does it mean? Uh, if I run node uh, right like this, so if I link the this this node to the load balancer and give it LB name uh, inside of the container it will automatically create for us uh, some uh, environment variables. Uh, in this case, the environment variable will look like this. And this will be the IP address of the uh, load bar. So uh, we can just run the, uh, the node. And if I refresh the uh, load balancer, we'll see here is the node. and is the application deployed too, and it's it's ready for uh, for requests. So if I copy it, and if I go localhost port eighty eighty slash node info, really This now goes through the uh, load balancer to the uh, to this node, right? Of course, we can grow this cluster and just run another one. And yeah, if I refresh, you will see that a new node joins the cluster and uh, the application is deployed. So if I refresh now, you will see that the host name changes. Of course, I have no control uh, over the routing, so yeah. At some point, it, it will go to the other host, maybe. <laughs> Demos. Ah, here it is. <laughs> Yeah, so this is this is how it works. Mm, okay, but this is not very nice. So the question is, can we probably automate things? And of course, the answer is yes. We can use Fig. Fig uh, is a uh, simple tool uh, recently bought by Docker, uh, where you describe your application in uh, Fig.yaml, uh, which looks like this. So we have a node. These are my names, so we have a node which is run from this image, and we need to link it to the load balancer uh, run from this uh, image, and we want to expose uh, port 9090 uh, to port 80 inside of this uh, container. And when we run it, uh, it starts uh, one container for each uh, for each part, and in fact, this setup. This describes everything I've done in the cluster demo so far. So uh, the only thing I want, uh, I need to run is pick up. Can you um, group Docker images? So in Yum, you've got the notion of a package, but you've also got the notion of a group of packages. Uh, okay. Only by orchestration tools like Fig or uh, or or well other tools. 
but not directly built in into Docker. So there's, there's no sort of single command I could use to pull down all the images I need for a cluster? Yeah, but it, once again, this, this is an external uh, tool. This is not uh, built into Docker. A Docker is really a core, so I don't think they they, they even remove uh, features uh, uh, from, from, from Docker to make this really, uh, really small. So if, if I refer now the Mock Cluster Manager, I see that uh, one node is, is there. Uh, of course, this is uh, the whole new cluster. And if I go now uh, here, I can, of course, scale the, uh, my cluster and specify that I want to have three nodes. So if I go back and start refresh the things, the, the load balancer, you see that new nodes come and the application should be deployed. And yeah, um, of course, I can uh, I can run this simple script, script where I ask the load balancer for the node info context, and uh, as you can see. It goes uh, through the uh, through the containers that are running uh, Wi-Fi. Of course, once again, I have no control over it, so it's five, I will be and three, two. Yeah, as you can see, it's it's running. So uh, this is the uh, the end of my demos, but let's go back to quickly to do the uh, presentation. A few tips. Uh, so if you need metrics, uh, then uh, you need to use I IP tables for network metrics. And if you want to have uh, everything else, uh, so CPU, memory, and so on, you need to parse uh, CPUs by system. So if you need to limit resources, well, you can do it. Uh, for example, uh, if you want to lower or give more uh, CPU to a particular a container, you specify uh, the shards of the CPU. This, uh, this is a relative number. So every new container by default gets uh, 1,024. So if you uh, give them 512, it's lower. But uh, it really depends on what's the, uh, um, what the CPU is, uh, usage on the host and so on. So you cannot say, uh, I want to give 1 gigahertz uh, of uh, CPU to this container. This is not possible. Uh, you can say uh, how many, mm, how much memory uh, a container can use. In this case, uh, in this example, this is 128 max. This space is tr tricky. Uh, by default, you get uh, 10 gigabytes, mm, but you can uh, change it, uh, but this will be changed for all the new containers that will be created. And uh, this is the storage op uh, is a switch uh, to the Docker daemon. So you need to restart your Docker daemon and change the uh, change the size. So, well, this is uh, well, this, th this is not a nice thing and I hope this will change uh, in the future so we, we, we will be able to, to limit uh, this space in a proper way. So, does, yeah? Does Java correctly see the memory cap? Uh, when, when JVM starts up, it asks the operating system how much physical RAM it's got, and it configures its heap size proportional to that by default. Um, the container size or the host size. Uh, could you please repeat? When a JVM starts yeah. to do Java from the command line, it configures itself based on how much memory the host has. So it looks at the host memory and it picks a, a Java heap size that is proportional to the host's memory. Right. Um, well, this would be tricky because uh, uh, if I remember cor correctly, uh, inside of the container, uh, the, 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 the memory size would be reported right. I know it. It would. It, it well. It should be. It should report 180 max. Isolation is. Yes. Yes. So it should report 180 max. 
if, if you uh, use the pros memminfold, so this should be 180. Um, so if you need to do backup, uh, it depends on what you want to, to, to backup. If files, then you use volumes. Just mount a directory from the host and, uh, in the container and copy the files. That's it. If you want to uh, back up some data, for example, the database, you should use links. Uh, links are this feature when you link one container to another one. And uh, even then, we can use also volume. So we can uh, connect one container to another one, uh, authenticate and dump the data. Uh, to a volume which is mounted to a host. So uh, this way works too. Uh, well, if you need to access your containers, the question is, do you own the host? If yes, uh, then use NSenter. This will run um, a command. This can run a command that uh, in the same namespace uh, that uh, is run the, the container, which literally means uh, that you will be you will um, see all the processes uh, there. For example, you can using this comment, you can run bash, uh, and you will be able to uh, to modify uh, everything there. So uh, let me show you. I think we have here a Wi-Fi. This is a DSSH is a short, short cut, uh, alias for the NS command with some additional switch, switches. But uh, DSAX, as you can see, I'm inside, let's call it inside of the container, and I see the, all the processes uh, run. So this is NS enter. Uh, in other cases, if you do not own the host, you need to run SSHD inside of the container, but uh, this is, well, bad practice, really. Um, if you need performance, well, the per performance is really super. So uh, CPU is, uh, I would say, uh, native uh, memory, almost no overhead. It depends uh, how you run it. And uh, there is no overhead with the network if you run with the switch net host, which binds to the host uh, network and uh, iOS native on volumes. So this is it. Hope you hope you liked uh, uh, Docker and and hope you you try the uh, JBoss uh, images soon because I think it's it's worth to take a look at this tech. Thank you very much, Mark. Um, do we have any questions from people in the room? Um, can I ask? A yeah, go for it. Yeah. yeah. I know, uh, in one of your cluster examples, you had a variable for the load balancer uh, IP address. And uh, I know you just referenced it as like $LB something. Where does it actually configure? How does it actually get expanded? Um, this, uh, this environment variable is created by Docker itself. And it's automatically created when it finds that you link one container to other one. Um, I don't know if I will be able uh, docker run, for example, IP Fedora bash, and link it, for example, load balancer. It should be there <laughs> still. Uh, no, there is no. Docker PS. Uh, we have some. Um, names, node one. Okay, let's. This should work. As you can see right now, it created this. Uh, environment variables for you, uh, for me. <laughs> uh, so you need to choose the the right one because there are it it just 
creates all the permutations uh, of, of the names. Uh, it's port, AT, TCP port, which really doesn't make uh, sense in, uh, in some cases, but you need to find the, the right one. For example, with the uh, ADDR at the end, it's the IP address of the, of the uh, linked uh, container. So uh, LB is exactly what we have here. So here we define the name of the of the LB. So if we do uh, if we do now LB one one and run it one more time, you see this is the environment variable is called LB one one. So yeah, th this is how it gets generated. Cool, that's great. Thanks. Uh, one more question about uh, the clustering. Can you actually, uh, do you have to run all the containers in the same physical machine? I don't think it's a necessity, but is it, how do, how do you go about setting up a cluster when you're actually having containers running in two different physical machines? Right. Um, so my example will work only uh, on one machine, of course. Uh, there is no support for multiple machines in Docker itself. Uh, you need to use other tools. For example, Project Atomic, uh, which is a Red Hat uh, project that, that solves this thing. And it's pretty similar to Fig, but uh, it has uh, a lot more feature, but it's, uh, yeah, but it's a really bigger, bigger project than Fig. So you need to use uh, other tools uh, to, to orchestrate uh, things like running one um, cluster or connect uh, Docker containers running on, on multiple hosts. That's great. Um, last question. Uh, you showed another tool which was actually working as an orchestration tool for on top of Docker, like the fig. Uh, is there any UI tools for actually managing any of these things already, even if it's like a paid for solution? Uh, once again, Project Atomic, it has a dashboard. Uh, I forgot the name, but uh, well, you, you can find some uh, examples on the on the project atomic.io. I think that's the website URL uh, there, and there is there is a. Uh, dashboard built in where you can uh, see the uh, containers and uh, I think it also allows to, to manage them uh, using the UI, web UI. Oh, that's great, thanks. Any more questions? No? So uh, one thing I wanted to show was I'll just share my screen now. Uh, so I was really, uh, there we go. So one of the things that went, uh, so I just want to show that we're embracing Docker um, at Red Hat. So on the JWS developer site, uh, some of our products, we have um, alongside the downloads that you would imagine, like a jar or source code and so on, we've got links to Docker build files as well. So this is for um, a few service works. We have a Docker build file. You can see there a little Docker icon. Uh, and on the download page for JWS data virtualization, we also have a Docker build file. So those are the Docker files that Mark is showing. Yes, well, the links to there's a, it's a link to a repository which contains them. So here we have a they're just experiments at the moment. They're not supported, so they're just on K people's uh, repo at the moment. It looks like, but. Uh, yeah, but sorry, the, the JBoss uh, slash Docker Files repo is uh, a bit unfortunate name <laughs> because yeah, this should be some 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 examples or something like this. But this is uh, our Docker do project Docker Files are under JBoss slash Docker Files. So this this is uh, <laughs> yeah a bit an of name clash. <laughs> yeah, so I guess we need to talk offline about um, how we're doing this. So there's only like there's two products I think at the moment that have them, but we I think we need to probably talk about a more unified way of linking these. But we we can set this up like uh, okay. I'm just gonna stop sharing my screen. Okay, so uh, thank you very much, Marek. Thanks.
Are there any more questions from anybody? No? Okay, well, um, I'll say goodbye. Thanks for, thanks for joining us. Have a Thank great you. Time. It's time for a beer. Thanks. Yeah, that's it for us. Thanks. All right. Cheers. <laughs>